Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 21. In this video, we're gonna learn about multiplying and dividing integers. For the lesson objectives for today, we're going to learn how to multiply integers and we're also gonna learn how to divide integers. All right, so at this point in the course, we should know how to multiply whole numbers together. And we know that unless we have a factor of zero, if we multiply two whole numbers together, we're going to get a positive product. So I have here, we all know that the product of two positive numbers is positive, even if you've never thought about it. So we have that a positive times a positive will give us a positive. All right, so now let's build up to the rules where we're going to multiply with negative numbers. So first we have four times three. So from the multiplication tables, we know the answer is 12. But going back to earlier in the course, we said that multiplication was a shortcut for repeated addition. So really I could write this as three plus three plus three plus three. So I have one, two, three, four of these guys. And so of course I could add three plus three is six, six plus three is nine, nine plus three is 12. So I get 12 either from this guy or from the multiplication tables and going with this guy. So we see that it's just a shortcut for repeated addition. Now, what if I throw something in the mix like four times negative three? Well, what does this mean? Again, if I follow this same thought process, well, it means that I have a repeated addition here where I have negative three plus negative three plus negative three plus negative three one more time. Well, we know how to add integers already. And basically we have a common sign. So we'll just put a negative right there. And then you could just add the absolute values. So three plus three plus three plus three is going to be 12. So the answer here becomes negative 12. Does this make sense? Just stop for a moment and think about it. Let's say that you are losing $3 a day at your business or whatever you're doing. So day one, day two, day three, day four, instead of adding those guys together, you could do a quick multiplication and say, okay, well, there's four days where I lost $3 each day. I would do four times three in my head and say that's 12. And then I would apply a negative to it because it's a loss. So that's basically what we're going to be doing when we multiply integers. Okay, we're gonna think about the absolute values being multiplied, and then we're gonna attach the sign that we need to. All right, now I wanna show you something else because it's a little bit confusing when we go to negative three times four, okay? The way I like to show this is using my commutative property. So let me erase this real quick. We already know that four times three is equal to three times four. So we can legally switch the order of the factors. If I think about three times four, let me write that out. So three times four, this is what? This is now going to be four plus four plus four, which is also going to give me 12, right? So four plus four is eight, eight plus four is 12. So if I get something like, let's say negative three times four, I can legally switch the order and say that this is four times negative three. And I'm right back to this definition right here, which gives me negative 12. So we can see that a positive times a negative gives me a negative and a negative times a positive gives me a negative. Let's go through the same thing with this guy right here. I'm just gonna slide down a little bit. So we have five times two. So let's start out with what we know. This is two plus two plus two plus two plus two. So I have one, two, three, four, five of these guys. And so we know that five times two from the multiplication tables would be 10. But again, you could add two plus two is four, plus two is six, plus two is eight, plus two is 10. So we can also do five times negative two in a similar way. So this would be negative two plus negative two plus negative two plus negative two plus negative two. And of course, this would be negative 10. Now, if I change the order, let's say I was given negative two times five. Well, of course, I could just flip it back, right? So it's going to give me the same answer because of the commutative property of multiplication. So I can just legally say that this is the same as five times negative two, which would give me this negative 10. And if you were presented with, let's say, negative five times two, well, you could flip that around into two times negative five. And you could say that this is equal to what? This is negative five plus negative five, which would be negative 10 as well. Okay, so let's look at the sign rules here. So we saw that a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive is gonna give us a negative. So that's pretty easy to understand. Where we start running into problems is where you get negative times negative, and we say that's a positive. All right, let's quickly think about this pattern to show that a negative times a negative is a positive. There's other ways you can show this, but I think this is the quickest way and the easiest way to think about it. So if you have three times negative three, we say that's negative nine. So we know that already, that 
3 times negative 3 can be written as negative 3 plus negative 3 plus another negative 3. And of course, that is negative 9. Now, looking at this pattern, as we decrease this factor on the left by 1, so in other words, now this is going to be a 2, what's going to happen is the product here is going to increase by 3. So this 2 times negative 3 is equal to now only negative 3 plus negative 3. And so this would give me a negative 6. So I've increased by 3. Now if I go to 1 times negative 3, I'm increasing by 3 again. Right, so this is negative 3. And the pattern just continues. So now this goes to 0 and this goes to 0, so I'm increasing by 3. Let me actually get rid of this. And I'm just going to show this as this going plus 3. And this going plus 3. And this going plus 3. So when you get here to negative 1 times negative 3, again, this is just decreasing by 1. So from 0, if I subtract away 1, I'm at negative 1. And this is still increasing by 3, so plus 3. This goes down by 1 this increases by 3. So plus 3, and then plus 3. So negative 1 times negative 3, again, using this pattern, would be positive 3. Then negative 2 times negative 3, using this pattern, would be positive 6. And then negative 3 times negative 3, using this pattern, would be positive 9. All right, so once you have the sign rules down, you're ready to multiply integers. And basically, if you can multiply whole numbers, then you could just blow through these problems. The first thing is you want to determine the sign of the product. So if you have a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative, so if you have the same signs, your answer or your product will be positive. And then if you have different signs, so a negative times a positive or a positive times a negative, your answer will be negative. So you have a negative product in that situation. So once you figure out what the sign is, you just want to multiply the absolute values. So it's really, really quick. So let's come through here and just blow through some of these problems. You have a negative 2 times 7. Negative times positive is negative. Again, different signs. Then just multiply 2 times 7, that's 14. So the answer is negative 14. Here we have 4 times negative 4. So you have a positive times a negative, that's a negative. So different signs, negative product. Then 4 times 4, just multiply the absolute values, that's 16. So the answer is negative 16. Here we have negative 11 times 5. So you have a negative times a positive, that's a negative. And then 11 times 5, that's 55. So this is negative 55. Here we have negative 12 times negative 9. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So when you first start doing this, you can write out a plus symbol if you want. Of course, it's not necessary. So I'm just going to do it just for the sake of completeness here. Now, I want to do 12 times 9. Some of you are still learning how to multiply. So I'll do that as a vertical multiplication. So 9 times 2 is 18. 8 down carry the 1. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So this is 108. So this is positive 108. Of course, you can keep the plus sign out there if you want, or you can just write 108. But negative times negative is positive, and also positive times positive is positive. So if you have the same sign, negative and negative, then basically you're going to have a positive product. Okay, here we have negative 10 times negative 4. So we know this is a positive. Again, you can put a plus sign out there or leave it off. It's up to you. And then if we're multiplying 4 times 10, right, you're multiplying the absolute values there. Well, you just multiply 4 times 1, that's 4. And then just attach 1 trailing 0. So this would be positive 40. Then here, a negative times a negative, again, is a positive. And then you're doing 15 times 14. Let me do that over here. So 15 times 14. 4 times 5 is 20. 0 down carry the 2. And then 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. And then let me erase this. 1 times 15 is 15. But remember, you're starting in the tens place here, so you've got to move this over. So you're going to put a 5 here and a 1 here. And then let me just add this. So bring down the 0. 6 plus 5 is 11. 1 down carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So this would be 210. This would be 210. All right, now let's talk about what happens if we multiply more than two integers. So this is just as easy. First, let me do this the long way, and then we'll think about what's going on. So let's say I work left to right, and I go negative 6 times 1, and that's going to give me negative 6. Negative times positive is negative. 6 times 1 is 6, so that's negative 6. So let me copy this. So times negative 8, and then times negative 4. So now you have a negative 6 times a negative 8. Negative times negative is positive, and then 6 times 8 would be 48. So this is positive 48, and then times negative 4. So here, positive times negative is negative, and then 48 times 4, some of you can do that in your head. It's going to be 192, but just in case you can't, 4 times 8 is 32, 2 down, carry the 3. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So bring this over here. The final answer is negative 192. Now, an easier way to do this is to count the total number of negative factors. Now, if the total number of negative factors is going to be an even number, and I'll explain what that is in a moment, then you're going to have a positive product. 
If the total number of negative factors is an odd number, I'll explain what that is in a moment, then you're going to have a negative product. Let me actually erase this real quick. And I'm just going to put this up here. This is negative 192. I want you to see what would happen if I wrote negative 6 times negative 1 times negative 8 and then times negative 4. How would that change the product from this guy going to this guy? Well, what's happening is in this particular case, notice that you have these two guys that you can pair up and then you have this one left over. So basically you have three negative factors and three is an odd number. Again, I'll explain what that is in a moment. So this guy right here gives me a negative product, but this guy I have these two that I can pair up and these two that I can pair up. So basically each pair creates a positive, right? Each pair of negatives. So negative times negative gives me a positive and then negative times negative gives me a positive. So because I have one, two, three, four negative factors and four is an even number, this is gonna be a positive product. So this would change this to positive 192. Now, when I say even and odd, what do I mean? We haven't gotten to what we call the divisibility rules yet, but basically, if you can divide a number by two and there's no remainder, so something like two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three, so on and so forth, well, that's an even number, right? You can basically pair things up. So if I had, let's say, negative six times negative one times negative eight times negative four, and let's say I tacked on times negative one and then times negative one, well, here's a pair, here's a pair, here's a pair. I have six negative factors, so that means I'm gonna be able to pair these negatives up and there's nothing left over, and so I'm gonna end up with a positive result. So this would still be positive 192. Now, if I took one of these away like this, well, now the answer is going to change into negative 192 because I can pair these guys up and pair these guys up, but this is a leftover. So that means that an odd number would be something that's not divisible by two. So in this case, you have one, two, three, four, five of these guys. If I take that five and I divide it by two, what's gonna happen is I'm going to get two with a remainder of one. So you have one, two, and then one left over. That one left over or that remainder is always gonna give you a negative because I can't pair it with another one. If I go back, to times negative one. Well, now I can pair it up. I have six of these guys. Six divided by two would be three, right? One, two, three of those guys. So this would give me a positive 192. Let's fly through this now. So we have negative eight times three times negative two times 11. Okay, so I have one, two negative factors. Two is an even number. Two divided by two is one, no remainder. And so I know I'm gonna have a positive product. So now I can just multiply absolute values. Eight times three is 24. 24 times two is 48. So I need to know what is 48 times 11 now. And so one times 48 is 48. And then this one, again, you've got to move down. One times 48 would be 48. And let's add here. So eight comes down, four plus eight is 12, two down carry the one, one plus four is five. So let's drag that up there and say the final answer is 528. Okay, let's take a look at one more. So here we have negative two times five times negative one times three times negative 20 times negative 30. So this looks a lot worse than it is. First, again, I would count. I have one, two, three, four negative factors. Four is an even number, right? Four divided by two is two, no remainder. Again, you can always pair these guys up. So this guy and this guy, that's gonna make a positive. And then this guy and this guy, that's gonna make a positive. So if you have an even number of negative factors, you will get a positive result. So here I could just go through and multiply the absolute values. So two times five is 10, and then times one would still be 10, and then times three would be 30. Let me stop and write this out. So I have 30, and then forget about the signs here, we already know it's positive, times 20, and then times 30. Okay, well what I can do is use my trick for trailing zeros. Three times two times three, three times two is six, six times three is 18, so this is 18. And then I have one, two, three zeros that I'm gonna attach to the end, so one, two, three. So the final answer here would be positive 18,000. All right, now let's move on and talk about dividing integers. So this is just as easy as multiplying integers. So the first thing is we wanna determine the sign of the quotient. And then once we've done that, we just wanna divide the absolute values. So the sign rules are pretty easy. So basically, if you're dividing integers and you have the same sign, you're gonna get a positive quotient. If you're dividing integers and you have different signs, you're gonna have a negative quotient. So positive divided by positive or negative divided by negative will give you a positive. And then if you have a positive divided by a negative or a negative divided by a positive, you will get a negative. All right, before we get to the problems, let me take a few minutes here and think about where the sign rules come from. So let's start out with something we know. Let's say we have 15 divided by three. So again, what does this mean? 
It means I have 15 of something, could be boxes, could be whatever, and I'm going to split it up into equal groups where each group has three. So three boxes or again, whatever you have. So we can use a related multiplication statement, or again, you can use repeated subtraction. So you could go through and say, okay, this is 15 minus three, and that would give you 12, and then you can go 12 minus three, and that would give you nine, and then you would go nine minus three, and that would give you six, and then six minus three would give you three, and then three minus three would give you zero. So I did that one, two, three, four, five times. So the answer is five. And of course, we already know that. So the answer here would be five. Or you could have asked the question, what times three gives me 15? And the answer from the multiplication tables would be five. So we know five times three is 15. So 15 divided by three is five. Okay. So using that same logic, let's go ahead and ask the question, what is negative 15 divided by three? Well, this would be what? I would put a question mark here and just say, well, question mark times three would give me negative 15. Well, for multiplying integers, we know that if this is negative, well, that's going to come from a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive. This right here is positive, so this has to be negative. So the question mark would be a negative. And then, of course, multiplying the absolute values, we know that 5 times 3 would give us 15. So this would be negative 5 here. So the question mark here would be negative 5. Okay, so that's one way to think about it. I have some things set up over here. So now we're doing 15 divided by negative 3 equals what? Well, again, what times negative 3 would be 15? Well, this right here would have to be a negative 5 now because negative times negative would be positive. So negative 5 times negative 3 would be positive 15. So that means 15 divided by negative 3 would be negative 5. Now, coming through here, negative 14 divided by negative 7 is what? Again, you could say what times negative 7 is equal to negative 14. So here you would want a positive right? Because positive times negative is negative. So this would be a two. Two times negative seven is negative 14. So negative 14 divided by negative seven is positive two. So here we have that a positive divided by a positive gives you a positive. You have a negative divided by a negative gives you a positive. So again, same signs, you get a positive quotient. Then you have a positive divided by a negative gives you a negative, And then a negative divided by a positive gives you a negative. So different signs, negative quotient. Okay, let's burn through some examples. So you have a negative 50 divided by five. So again, negative divided by positive is negative. And then 50 divided by five would be 10. So this is negative 10. Here you have negative 40 divided by four. So negative divided by positive is negative. 40 divided by four is 10. So this is negative 10 as well. So then we have negative 200 divided by negative 10. So negative divided by negative is positive. And then 200 divided by 10 is 20. And then coming down here, you have negative 34 divided by negative 17. Negative divided by negative is positive. 34 divided by 17 is 2. Then we have 27 divided by negative 3. So positive divided by negative is negative. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So this is negative 9. And then for the last problem, we have 16 divided by negative 4. Positive divided by negative is negative. And then 16 divided by 4 is 4. So this is negative 4.